Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV here in Zurich today at the Precious Metal Summit and we start our interview session first of all with Endeavor Silver, our lovely silver producer out of Mexico with Bradford Cook, the CEO and we want to get an update. Brad, good morning. Yes, good morning Jürgen, how are you? <laughs> Perfect, hope you too and uh, despite the weather I think Endeavor is doing better and better now. Yes, we had a tough start to the year, as you know, but mm -hmm. we, every quarter now is getting better. We had a good, solid third quarter and looking better for the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, as you are bringing three new mines in production, it's, yeah, I would say a, a real yeah, tough uh, duty to do that, but it looks like you're well organized. Maybe you can comment on the first one, uh, Compass, which should start actually next quarter, right? Well, yes, actually. The company's in a very interesting transition period from our three mature mines to building three new mines. And our first mine number four, if you will, El Compass, mm -hmm. is in development now for the initial production by the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So uh, things are well underway. And by the way, your readers can go to the website and they'll find an, a monthly El Compass update with photographs on mm. the homepage. Have to do that. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> so when do you think it's more like, let's say, February, March to start or end of March? What, what is your feeling? I think what's reasonable to assume is that we'll have some development muck from the mine to put uh, to, through the mill starting in February, mm -hmm. but the actual ore feed won't start until March. Okay, great. Uh, with what uh, tonnage per day you want to start and uh, what production can we expect for 2018? Well, the full-scale production on the current model is uh, 200 tons per day, according to the economic study. But we have prepared the plant for 250 tons per day, and it does have ultimately a capacity of 500 tons per day. So there is an implied expansion in our future. Mm -hmm. However, it will take some months to ramp up to that 2 250 yeah, tons per Which day. is normally the mining business, I sure. would call it. And people would say, well, that's small, 200 mm -hmm. tons per day. But you know, the Hell Compass mine is very high grade. Mm -hmm. Average what, what, what means high grade? On, on a gold equivalent basis, almost 9 grams. On a silver equivalent basis, almost 700 grams. That's a lot, I would yeah. say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we can expect, what, like a million silver equivalent ounces, something like that? Approximately per year. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously, that's before any expansion. So we're looking for more ore. Clearly, we have acquired a number of properties in the district. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of drilling. News coming on that by year end. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to grow the resource base so that we can go to an expansion. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, let's talk shortly about money. Because uh, you had your third quarter numbers out, which still, I think was a slightly profit of approximately a million dollars, which is still be called in German a black number, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is okay. But uh, do you think uh, after the problems are solved on Guana uh, do you think you can improve this now over the next quarters? Because... We see the performance at Guanajuato improving month by month by month, mm -hmm. and we saw it already quarter by quarter. Um, and don't forget, by the end of September, we actually had accumulated earnings for the year of $7 million, and that's with a difficult start. Mm -hmm. So notwithstanding the issues at Guanajuato, the other mines are doing fine, yeah. and Guanajuato now is coming back. Perfect. Now, because uh, this leads to my question, um, you have everything financed the expansion so far. I mean, you have a lot of working capital, like $70 million, right? Yeah, $70 million working cap, 45 cash. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in reasonably good shape. No long-term debt. We paid off all our long-term debt. Oh, interesting. Uh, and we did most of that through the bear market. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, now we're actually looking at Compass fully financed. Mm -hmm. uh, mine number five is called Terra Nera. It's mm -hmm. an exciting new discovery of ours in Jalisco State, mm -hmm. Western Mexico. Mm -hmm. And on that one, we will look for a $50 million debt facility, mm -hmm. and we'll use $20 million of our cash for a $70 million capex on Terra okay. Nera. Yeah, about $50 million debt facility should be in your standing, I would say, to get very easy. It's like, like a bank facility, right? It's like a bank facility, yeah. and we did that, of course, when we uh, acquired El Cubo in 2012. That $50 mm -hmm. million has now been paid off, so we'll start again and do another 50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. That's like a rolling model. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> but growing with mind by mind, that's interesting. <laughs> um, let's talk shortly about uh, Paral. So what's the status there? You are drilling there. Maybe you can comment on some uh, results already. What's yes, going on? absolutely. Hidalgo de Peral is one of the famous districts in Mexico. There are many famous silver districts. Peral mm -hmm. is one of them. Uh, we acquired a major position in Peral at this time last year. It has been our biggest exploration program this year, over $3 million uh, mm -hmm. budgeted. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our first news release in recent weeks and expect some news actually uh, soon, in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. So we can expect good drill results? Well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, what's about there with uh, the development? I mean, this is a little bit more 
away, I would call it, like 2020 around? Yeah, yeah. so it's too soon to call it a development project yeah. because we're still actually exploring to expand the resource mm -hmm. base. But we did buy a project with 32 million ounces of, of historic resource. Which is always nice so to have. So given that head start, we have been presuming that it will get to the uh, production decision sometimes mm -hmm. 2019, maybe look at uh, building a mine there 2020 and beyond. Mm -hmm. If you would wrap that up for, let's say, the next three to five years, and I'm a shareholder of yours, uh, long term, of course, yeah. So, what can I expect as a shareholder, let's say, AIC wise, um, earnings wise, and production wise? Well, keep in mind, we were the lowest quartile uh, cost profile up mm -hmm. until we bought El Cubo in 2012. And we actually turned around El Cubo. It took three years. And in, in 2016, we were once again about $12.5 per ounce of all in sustaining costs. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're higher this year because of the issues at Guano Civi, but our long term forecast is sub $10 all in costs. Mm -hmm. And we get there partly by optimizing the three existing mines, but largely by developing new mines because each of the economic studies we've done on El Compos and Terranera have all in costs of less than $10. Terran are actually less than $5. Wow. So just building those mines makes us a low-cost producer. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I mean, you're now, your guidance for this year is approximately nine, nine point something uh, million silver crew and ounces. What would, what would be your gross profile then over the next years when you bring all those mines one after the other in production? So conceptually, we, uh, we hope to bring our three-year production profile in January. Mm -hmm. And I think the three-year outlook could include 50% production growth. Wow, so we can uh, look forward to 14, 15 million ounces. Uh, that's our target yeah. on an equivalent basis. Fantastic. And okay, if I recap that correctly, then we should be around the $10 AISC. Or lower. Or lower. Well, or lower is Long always term. better. But let's stay conservative. That sounds like a, a nice profit margin then for the future because we anticipate <coughs> higher silver prices, hopefully. <laughs> we, we do, and indeed. And, okay. uh, you know, there's a perfect storm developing yeah. in silver with falling supply and, and rising demand. So mm -hmm. we are preparing the company not only for growth, but mm -hmm. to capture a higher and higher profit margins. Mm -hmm. So you think, uh, because I think we are now in the sixth year of uh, yeah, supply deficit, right? Uh, you think this will start to kick in now? Because we wait for this now, like five years. <laughs> as, as you know, silver <laughs> tends to be a laggard behind gold. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it plays catch up in a hurry. So next year I expect gold to lead again. Mm -hmm. uh, and the year after perhaps silver will play catch up. Oh, perfect. That's a great final sentence. Bradford, thank you very much for that. And we look forward to the drill results, of course. And uh, all the best. And I would say latest PDIC, we do an update. Sounds good. Super. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Bradford Cook, the CEO of Endeavor Silver. And you heard it. The company is poised for growth and for profits, of course. The problems of Guanacevi are really behind them. And uh, I think by year end, really everything like 100% is done there. They're almost like the 90, 95% is uh, um, yeah, is uh, solved here. And what is really important is the growth profile goes up to 15 million silver equivalent ounces over the next three to four years. Three new mines, and I think this is one of the uh, of the real top growth profiles in the industry. And also the AIC, ten dollars or even lower. That's a fantastic number. So ready to make some money here? Check out the company. Thanks for watching us. Bye bye from Zurich. <laughs>